ಏಕೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುರ್ಮಹಾಭೂತ ಪೃಥಕ್ ಭೂತಾನ್ಯಕಶಿಲೋಕಾನ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ಯ ಭೂತಾತ್ಮ ಭುಂಕ್ತೆ ವಿಶ್ವಭುಗವ್ಯಯ ಇಮಂಸ್ತವಂ ಭಗವತೋ ವಿಷ್ಣೋ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ಪಥೇ ಜೈಚ್ಛೂಷಾ ಶ್ರೇಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತು ಸುಖಿ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶ್ವರಮಜಂಗತ ಪ್ರವಾಪ್ಯಯ ಭಜಂತಿ ಯೇ ಪುಷ್ಕರ ಸಂತಿ ಪರಾಭವ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ Wow, what planet are we on? What dimension is this? Whew. Wow. It just gets better and better all the time. It's, it's just amazing. Any questions or... <laughs> so great <sighs> holy name huh I'm not ready to start reading it <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I have to get back in my body first <laughs> It may take a while <laughs> Well, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> uh, I just, I like can't focus on my body. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm <laughs> supposed to preach now. <laughs> mm. Well, I gotta, I gotta get really into this. Huh? I can do some homework and really get into this and get there. Huh? Where? <laughs> I want to be where you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, you want to sit there? No, I want to sit right there. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a powerful story. <laughs> Krishna Krishna. Okay, so all you kiddies at home and <laughs> chanting along with us. <laughs> Woo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in until I get my eyes uncrossed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. What was in that soup? What's, what's, in <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Krishna. They used the secret ingredient. Hmm. The secret ingredient. Huh? They used the secret ingredient. The secret ingredient. The holy name. Yeah, Hing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess I can find it. What did you say? Which way do we go? Honestly, I just like that. I will be back after the break. <laughs> yeah, right. After this announcement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh? We should really have Kirtan. Kirtan. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be rolling on the floor. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna. Okay. <laughs> And then I have to read this. Chapter 15 of Nectar of Devotion. 
a spontaneous devotional service. Oh boy. <laughs> oh Steaming up my glasses. <laughs> oh, Krishna. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> oh, boy. Examples of spontaneous <laughs> hysteria. <laughs> Okay, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> Examples of spontaneous devotional service can be easily seen in Krishna's direct associates in Vrindavan. <clears throat> the spontaneous dealings of the residents of Vrindavan in relationship with Krishna are called Raganuga. These beings don't have to learn anything about devotional service. They are already perfect in all regulative principles and have achieved the spontaneous loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They're not the only ones. <laughs> For example, the cowherd boys who are playing with Krishna do not have to learn by austerities or penances, or yogic practice, how to play with him. They have passed all tests of regulative principles in their previous lives, and as a result, they are now elevated to the position of direct association with Krishna as his dear friends. Their spontaneous attitude is called Raganuga Bhakti. It's one of my favorite subjects. Um, if you look around on the internet, you know, there are all these different groups that are promoting bhakti. But even though they may say that they're actually on the platform of spontaneous devotional service, uh, if you read their teachings and you, and you watch them, how do they act? They're actually on the platform of regulative principles. Huh? They like talking endlessly about, you know, four regulative principles and this rule and that rule and this offense and that offense. And da, 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 da. So this atmosphere was very, very uh, strong in ISKCON. Huh? That in other words, your progress in devotional service is measured by uh, how well you can observe the regulative principles. Well, that was really funny because half of the leaders in ISKCON were gay. And they weren't following the regulative principles at all. Uh, they fell down. They, they were, um, you know, found with um, other devotees so, like that. Or they were using drugs like Jai Tirtha. I mean, you know, it, it's like what? Do you see the result? of focusing too much on regulative principles, you know, is that you actually, how can I say, reinforce your desire for these material things. It's just like if anybody has ever tried to quit smoking or quit drinking coffee or something like that. It's like the harder you try and the more you think about it, the more the desire comes up. But why is that? Why is that? Because the mind operates by attraction and repulsion, uh, acceptance and rejection, yes and no. Uh, so if you take a desire and the mind says, yes, I want this, uh, and you think about it all the time, right? And so because you're putting energy into that desire, the desire grows. Isn't it? Everyone has had this experience. But this opposite is also true. That if you take a desire and you think, no, no, I don't want this. 
Huh? The more you think about it, the more energy you put in it, the more the desire grows. See? Until it becomes uncontrollable. Until it becomes stronger than your willpower. And at that point, you fall down. This is the error of trying to navigate in spiritual space simply by the regulative principles. If you become obsessed with the regulative principles, if there's nothing beyond the regulative principles, by constantly obsessing over them, you will eventually fall down. Why? Because you're putting thought energy into those desires. Even if it's no, 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 the desire is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until finally one day it's, ah, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Can't help yourself. So there has to be a, a better way to do it, and sure enough, there is. Uh, for example, if you have a 